Hello Watch Enthusiasts and welcome to Watch Chronicler. For many a watch lover, the chronograph is the ideal complication. Pairing a stopwatch with a conventional watch in a legible and wieldy package makes this particular complication more useful than, for example, a moon phase and several orders of magnitude less expensive to buy and maintain than anything like a perpetual calendar or minute repeater. Today though, I'd like to speak about a very particular kind of chronograph, which on paper at least pairs quartz affordability and accuracy with mechanical feel, the Mecha Quartz chronograph. Often these are presented as a wonderful hybrid or compromise, but in this video I'd like to look at what they are, where they come from, and why, after reviewing an awful lot of them over the years, I'm more unconvinced than ever. But it isn't quite that simple, so carry on watching to find out. Today, the chronograph is a very different proposition to what it may have been in the past. In the 1950s and 60s, a mechanical chronograph was more financially accessible, but also stylistically quite different to what you might see today. Following the creation of a slew of automatic chronographs in the 1970s, with arguably the most important being the then Veljou, now ETA 7750, most brands moved away from manual movements, and so as a consequence chronograph watches became bigger and less interchangeable with the silhouette of simple three-hand watches, which generally became the standard for the watch industry after the 1970s and its fairly wild case designs. Over the years, with the combination of economic and stylistic changes, quartz watches and quartz chronographs by extension became for most the ideal choice if the complication was to their liking. An additional endorsement, of course, was considerably greater accuracy without the same level of craftsmanship and expense as would be needed to deliver a mechanical movement of the same calibre after the novelty of quartz watches had worn off and they became more affordable. As anyone who's watched a Roger Moore Bond movie will attest, quartz chronographs started their existence as digital watches. However, as tastes moved away from screens and back to traditional, and you could argue more legible analogue watches, it was only a matter of time before quartz chronographs followed suit. Initial attempts, it must be said, were at once delightful pieces of engineering and quality, but also far removed from what we see today. The best early example of this, and in fact the first analogue quartz chronograph, was the Seiko 7A28. This movement was to all intents and purposes better than many mechanical movements, with 15 joules, no real plastic componentry, notwithstanding insulators of course, plenty of decoration, the ability to be serviced entirely, and even premium mechanical details like a tension spring on the back of the second hand assembly to deaden shocks. Like other quartz watches though, it still used a quartz oscillator powered by a battery to keep time with a stepper motor to control the movement of the hands. Not to spend too much time on this point, the 7A28 also exhibited a characteristic which has remained with almost all quartz chronographs to this day, a very definite quartz feel. When the chronograph was engaged, it ticked in one second increments with a subdial to display fractions of a second. Likewise, the reset process involved the slow sweep of the second hand across the dial back to the zero position. These clearly were very different beasts to mechanical chronographs, and more importantly, didn't make much sense in more expensive watches as, throughout the 1980s, mechanical watches returned to favour. Half a decade later, in the late 1980s, came the JLC 630 movements, which presented a potential answer, Mecha Quartz. If one wanted the accuracy and durability of a quartz movement, and the feel and operation of a mechanical one, what would be stopping one from simply combining the two? In response to this question, these movements offered exactly that, with a quartz timekeeping system with energy stored in a battery, not a spring, and regulation being controlled by an oscillating quartz crystal, but to direct the flow of energy to the hands, these watches used comparable cams, springs and levers as a mechanical watch would. As a result, the watch would reset instantly, the second hand would flow around the dial, and to a more traditional chronograph wearer, the system would portray as little of its quartz underpinnings as possible. These movements became rather widespread, but due to JLC's production of movements for IWC in the 1990s, the most famous user of the movement was the IWC Flieger chronograph, reference 3741. With a similar case to the iconic other 1990s IWC aviation chronographs, the dial layout of that watch was changed to a horizontal and perhaps more fetching orientation, whilst its utility as a tool watch was enhanced. Unfortunately, this watch faced a serious obstacle, public interest. You see, in the 1990s, watchmaking in Europe was to be dominated by mechanical watches at even the lower levels of luxury. With its ceramic cases and doppel chronographs, split second chronographs to you or me, IWC was very much able to compete and didn't need the Mecha Quartz movement. Additionally, for entry level luxury watches, simple three hand or chronograph quartz movements were more cost effective. As a result, by the early 2000s, the luxury Mecha Quartz movement was, to all intents and purposes, dead. In the last decade, however, the Mecha Quartz movement has found a very new application. You see, watches have become more popular in this period, and as a result a few changes have occurred. Firstly, desire for brands like Rolex has increased immensely, with greater interest in watches which, in turn, 
has driven others like Omega to gird their loins and charge unto a promised land of higher pricing and greater prestige. The result has also been a technological arms race with silicon escapements, anti-magnetism, in-house movements, longer power reserves, and plenty more. This process has coincided with a general increase in watch pricing for reasons ranging from increased manufacturing costs to economic changes, which has made most brands more inaccessible or conversely, lower quality in order to cope. Where brand ranges are concerned, this has pulled in-house, high-tech watches into the top of collections, ETA or third-party mechanical watches have therefore taken a lower position, and Quartz former entry-level models have been booted altogether. This, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly where Mecha Quartz has re-entered the game. With growing interest in watches, and in particular mechanical watches, and a market in which these very chronographs are growing more costly, the production of an affordable alternative to a mechanical chronograph has become very important. In this context, a movement with the cheap construction and easy accuracy of a basic quartz movement, but with the superficial feel of a mechanical movement, makes a lot of sense. And this brings us to the movement at the centre of this video, and it would be fair to say, the centre of the Mecha Quartz revival, the Seiko VK series movements. Available for an extremely low price, this movement has become the ideal candidate to fit into chronographs up to around £500, and particularly those which, in an ideal world, would have a mechanical movement. In practice, these are watches with a vintage or classical style, appealing to someone who, in general, is buying them because they make financial sense, or to a much lesser degree, because they don't want the thickness of a mechanical chronograph. Put next to a previous luxury Mecha Quartz or its ancestor, the 7A28, the VK is a more utilitarian instrument. Without jewels and with a largely plastic construction, it takes a typically Quartz attitude of spend, don't mend. Still, plenty of mechanical aspects remain, like the chronograph assembly and the spring supporting the back of the second hand, and to be fair to the movement, it does give the crisp click of a mechanical chronograph. The second hand also flows around the dial in five ticks every second, but I'd like to put forward a somewhat unpopular contention. The Seiko VK movement is often a waste of money. Whilst in engineering terms there are often ways to achieve a similar effect more simply, the Seiko VK is more of an example of buy cheap, buy twice. There are two good reasons for this being the case. The first is inherent to the movement itself. The VK movement, accurate to about plus or minus 20 seconds per month, tries to mate the abrupt and somewhat violent nature of spring-loaded mechanical function to quartz engineering, engineering better suited to the push of a stepper motor, particularly when made out of plastic in the case of this movement. The result is that every VK-powered watch I've had for a long-term test has either had issues out of the box or developed them over time. The more minor problem seen on almost all examples was that when the chronograph was started, the hour and minute hands would be pulled forward, thus making setting the time accurately almost impossible if you wish to use the chronograph. More problematically, a handful of these watches didn't reset correctly, and the second hand would find itself a few seconds short of or beyond the zero marker, making the chronograph essentially useless. A proviso I will state is that quality levels did vary considerably, with more expensive watches like Autodromos being much better checked, whereas cheaper watches displayed most of the issues in my experience. The second problem is the competition. By trying to produce a Mecha Quartz movement, Seiko has painted itself into a corner. For the same price, an alternative is the Miyota 6S20, a truly modern quartz movement. Forming the basis of some of Bulova's affordable but high-frequency chronographs, this movement also shows sweeping seconds, but with a pure quartz construction. It also has far more metal components, including most of its gear train, and whilst not jeweled, it can be deconstructed to replace bearings and gears in a way which simply isn't provided by the Seiko movement. Of course, this servicing wouldn't be cost-effective, but you take my point. It does, of course, have downsides, granted, like a quartz reset to zero with the second hand going all the way around the dial, but by acknowledging its quartz nature, this movement is all the better for it, in my opinion. Aside from imitating a mechanical second hand, it has a longer battery life, a thinner construction, and most importantly, if you pull the crown out and use the pushers, you can rectify any hand misalignment which could happen under extreme shock, and which would send a Seiko VK to the service centre. So what's the moral of the story? Certainly not that either the Seiko VK, or more importantly, the Mecha Quartz movement are bad, per se. The Mecha Quartz chronograph, if treated with respect and the necessary development funds, something clearly shown by JLC with their exquisitely made movements, becomes a marvellous combination of accuracy with a feel you really want. As an aside, it is possible that the Seiko Spring Drive chronograph is, in actual fact, the obvious successor to a proper Mecha Quartz movement, given our fascination with mechanical movements and an understandable feeling of coldness for Quartz technology. The Seiko VK is, however, an odd case. In my opinion, 
it isn't a flawed piece of design, but when brought down to a unitary price of well under £30, you can't expect a system conceived in its most fundamental form to be produced for many times that price to give sensible performance. Personally speaking, in the same price bracket as you would see those VK movements, I would accept the slightly more quartz feel of the Miyota movement I mentioned for the lower end of that market, or alternatively, try to save a bit to get a simple, sturdy Velju 7750 at the top end of that price bracket. But what do you think? Are Mecha Quartz movements worth your time, or would you choose a different option? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. This is Armon from watchchronicler.com. Out.